Well, you know what? Let me just, guys, since we're already here on Liches, let me just go and find someone to play a quick 3-2. Um, a lot of you have been asking me to play some of the openings that we have covered in the lesson a long time ago. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm looking for opportunities to go ahead and do that. So this is like the King's Indian attack. Look, this is like the, like the London setup, but the bishop goes to g4. So you know what? Let me just go pawn to d3. Um, they took, we just take back, no big deal. And now I'm just going to, to castle. So e4 is a move that we typically do here. Bishop g5 comes to mind, pawn to c4. But let me just go pawn to e4. So same thing, same boring thing, nothing new. Now rook on the same file. Okay, they're getting out of it. Knight to c3, putting pressure on d5. And guys, this is a 2506. And I think they just blundered a pawn right there. All right. So now you know the drill. We just have to make sure that we don't blunder because we could easily lose this game if we're not paying attention. So they might be putting pressure on the C file, but not today. So this C file is not going to be a problem anymore. Now bishop f3, nah, all the way to g2. I'm just leaving this open for my queen, yeah. Okay, so queen, you know what? Yep. Now queen f3, putting pressure on b7, allowing this for... Hmm. Now I'm not going to take simply... Oof. I'm not going to take guys because we talked about this on lesson number, well actually last lesson, that it's not about what we trade, but the pieces that are left on the board. If I'm left with opposite color bishops, the chances of getting a draw increase by a lot. But you know what? Now that I think about it, um, this is going to be a pass pawn here. So still the chances are high, but They're gonna have to play if they wanna make this a draw. Okay, let me just go take it easy. So just trading rooks. Um, I don't want them to get to the seventh rank and complicate the game. Okay, so bishop d5. Now they better trade. And after they trade, I'm threatening to do a discovery attack. Oh, no, no, no. I thought I was gonna be throwing a discovery attack with this, but it is defended. Okay, if I take, take. You see, this is how they want to complicate the game. Now, if I take, this is hanging. If I take, they take it on the one twice. Then take on takes, rook d1. What's wrong with that? Hmm, that's, this is what's wrong with that. Okay, what if I go b3, bishop c3. Okay, let's go for it. So guys, you see, they're trying to simplify trade pawns. I shouldn't be doing this. But, okay, let me just do this. Trying to get to the seventh rank. So I'm guessing bishop d4. So just looking. Now, we also talked in our last lesson that opposite color bishops could be drawish, but they could be great if you're the one attacking. If you're attacking, it's like you have an extra piece because this bishop has no light square bishop to stop him. So now they got to take care of f7. And I'm thinking f6 might be the way, but then rook f7. So this might actually get really interesting. So if f6, rook f7 going to g8 is setting themselves for a discover check. If after f6, rook f7, king e8, then we take on g7. Okay. Oh. Mm. So should we take? Now look at this. Trick time. So if we take with the rook. They could take over here, eliminate the defender, and when I take, they get the rook. So we got to hit here with check. And now we... Now, should we go to g6 or to d5? Well, I'm going to d5, guys. This bishop is centralized, controlling a lot of the board. And, okay, now they want to go here. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let me just... Okay, okay. So you see, now, if they go to f6, they're putting pressure on f2. They also want to get to a6, putting pressure on a2. So the question is... The 
question is what do we do check check mm. question is king g2 the question is rook f7 rook f4 well let me just do no 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 Okay, let me do this. I'm, I mean, I really hate leaving the back rank. I mean, the seventh rank, but I just don't want him to get any activity. I want to be the one dictating the game. Now, I don't want to get into time pressure with the 25 or 6, because I know they could they could punish me for that. Okay, check. Now, my rook is ready to come over and help if anything happens. Okay, see, I knew they were gonna go for that pawn. They're just looking for ways to complicate the game, which is fine, that's valid, but we cannot let it happen. Okay, so h5, now this one is fixed. Now let me see if I can go after it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, so they want to go here too. Okay, let me do f3, that way I don't have to worry about f2. And... Hmm. Come on. Okay, let me do this. See, I just, I'm just getting away from this. Okay, now he's looking for ways to really complicate the game. Ah, that was not a good move. Now I'm just activating his pieces. Okay, just trying to get here. So guys, I don't have much time, so that's why I'm not talking that much, but... Okay. Okay, so we gotta find a way to... Mm -mm -mm. Okay, let me just push. That's what I gotta do, just push my pawn. But I gotta be careful. Ah, this guy's here. F7, A2, no, 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 exactly what I don't want. Mm. Now I'm I'm counting on this, but let's see if it works. Yeah, check. Now that pawn is controlled for now. Uh, Oh man, the bishop is active again. So, another pass pawn, that's all we need. That's all we need. That's all we need. So guys, this is what happens. When you're getting time pressure with a 2500 player, they're gonna either make you run out of time or they're gonna create complications out of thin air. And that's why I wanted to be careful, but still a good game. Okay, they're gonna go down here. What can I do? What can I do? This is actually a very interesting game. Okay, I gotta do this. But I don't know if I'm... What's going on here? Okay, maybe some ideas like this. Well, if I blockade the rook, I might promote. And even if they go bishop g7, I can deflect the bishop. He knows what I'm doing. Okay, now what? Now what? So this is coming. What? All right, we're back in the game. Unless I'm missing something, we are... We're back in the game, but I thought I had it discovered, but I don't. Okay, guys, so we should be able to win this. Come on. No silly mistakes. No room for silly mistakes. Okay. Oop, oop, oop. Uh, check. See? So looking for forks. 
Again, sorry that I'm not explaining much, but this, this is getting interesting. What am I missing? What am I missing? What am I missing? Okay, check. 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 Now he needs to do this. And my king keeps getting closer. I don't know what for, to be honest. But, oh, bishop e4 was the move. Okay, check. 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 And I think I got the rook. All right, guys. Oh, what did I, what did I miss? <laughs> okay, now I got it. See, light squares, just working on the light squares. Okay, now no stalemates. No, no, no. Oh, see if he goes here, checkmate. Oh, checkmate, there you go. <sighs> All right, guys, so I hope that you like this game. So we defeated a 2500, so I think that was pretty good. And again, uh, I think this just made the lesson way longer, but I hope you got some, um, some value out of it. Uh, to be honest, I don't think the game was that that good. Uh, he just blundered upon at the beginning. But as you can see, it's just a matter of staying out of trouble, keeping it simple, and of course, uh, being very careful in the in, in the time pressure. So I know that we talked about not doing so, uh, doing 3-2, 5-3 seems to be the best time control, but this is just a bonus. So now, I'm going to let you go, guys, and I'll see you in our next lesson.